Direct from the Broski Nation headquarters in Los Angeles, California, this is the Broski Report with your host, Brittany Broski. What's going on, Jake Paulers? Welcome back to the Broski Report, starring me, Brittany Broski, the host of the Broski Report. Me. And that's me. I'm coming me I'm on the Broski Report. I'm talking about Brittany Broski. Ew, my throat. Hey guys, how are we feeling on this beautiful summer day? Happy summer, team. Happy summer solstice. What the fuck is a solstice? Okay? What is an equinox? What is a solstice? What is an eclipse? Other than the third book in the Twilight series. I don't know what any of those terms mean. I'm going to look up what a solstice is. Solstice. Solstice. Definition. A solstice is an event that occurs when the sun appears. I just, I don't care. <laughs> I have went through reading that was like, I actually don't fucking care. I don't give the slightest of a fuck about this. I could not care less. But I'm going to read it because here we are. Oh, my face just got hot. I just like, I'm trying to practice honesty. Okay. Being so totally honest. When I don't care about something, I'm just going to come out and say it. When I'm bored, I'm bored. If I'm talking to someone and they're fucking boring me, especially a man, I'm going to be like, I'm bored. Can you talk about something else? You're fucking bored. Boring. <laughs> Anyway, I still don't know what a solstice means. A solstice. All right. An event that occurs when the sun appears to reach its most northerly or southerly excursion. That's not a real word. Northerly or southerly excursion relative to the celestial equator on the celestial sphere. Now y'all are just fucking making things up to piss me off. The time or date twice a year at which the sun reaches its maximum or minimum declination. What does that mean? Marked by the longest and shortest days, June 21st and December 22nd. The longest. So the summer solstice is at the longest day. Like the sun is around for the longest. What the fuck is a declination? The angular deviation of a compass needle from true north. Because the magnetic north pole and the geographic north pole do not coincide. (laughs) <laughs> this is making me angry this is making me really fucking mad actually i'm about to start fuming the angular distance of a point north or south of the celestial equator i have got to see a picture define declination summer solstice summer solstice <laughs> holy fuck dude i have had four cups of cafe bustello today when are they going to sponsor me? Kathy Bustello, I'm fucking... Just send me a PR package at, at minimum. I'm going to start snorting the grounds. Next episode, I'm going to open... It's going to open with me with a cereal bowl with Cafe Bustello coffee grounds in it. And I'm going to eat it with a spoon. I'm on... I have so much caffeine pumping through my little little skinny little veins right now. My veins are so skinny. Because I'm skinny. I'm actually the thinnest woman to be alive. Summer solstice. Fuck off, dude. (laughs) Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Summer solstice. In the northern hemisphere, the declination angle is at its maximum and is 23.45 degrees. Spring equinox. What the fuck is an equinox? Me getting angry at science for 45 minutes straight. Equinox science, not equinox gem. There are only two times of the year when the Earth's axis is tilted neither toward nor away from the sun. Oh. Resulting in a nearly equal amount of daylight and darkness at all latitudes. These events are referred to as equinoxes. The word equinox is derived from two Latin words. 
equus, which means equal, and nox, which means night. Actually, Loomis and nox are spells from Harry Potter that both light up and darken a room. You fucking idiot. (laughs) Equinox side effects? Oh, equox. What the fuck is equox? European Medicine Agency? What are the risks associated with equox? The most common side effect in horses, which may affect more than one in ten horses, are ulcers or sores of the lining of the mouth or skin around the mouth. What does that mean? (laughs) The equinox has given horses ulcers. We have to put a stop to the equinox. I will shoot down the sun. I will fire a weapon so massive into the sky that I will put an end to the equinox and summer solstices for the rest of time eternal. Broski Nation, we're doing something about that UV index. I want to be able to go outside and enjoy a nice day in the sun without worrying about getting a mole that is raised or discolored or can cause me cancerous issues in the future. I've already had a few moles removed and it runs in my family. We're constantly getting shit zapped off our bodies. What's it called when they they zap it with a liquid nitrogen or whatever it is? How do you freeze off a mole, a a wart? Your child's wart can be treated with liquid nitrogen. See, I have had to go to the doctor. I had two on my finger in high school and I, he went in there and and it hurt so fucking bad, but they were gone. Liquid nitrogen freezes and destroys both the wart and the small area of normal skin around. Y'all, warts are so fucking gross. There's like spores. Oh, actually, I'm going to vomit. I actually can't think about that. I'm going to vomit. What is an equinox? Equinox is when it's the earth is upright. And a solstice is when the earth, the sun hits the earth at an angle. Spring equinox in the northern hemisphere and autumn equinox in the southern hemisphere. Winter solstice. Oh. Yeah, put this picture up on the screen. Summer is when... Summer solstice is when the sun hits the earth from above at an angle. And the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere. And southern solstice... Summer solstice in the southern hemisphere. That makes sense. That's why us in Australia have opposite seasons. That makes so much sense now, actually. Wow. Believe scientists. Wow. Women in STEM. That's actually crazy. Anyway, happy summer. Happy summer solstice. I don't know if this episode's going to go up when it's the summer solstice. But wow. Today we are celebrating um, Isaac Newton. We're celebrating... Hey, I don't know. Who, who Who else was kicking it during that time? Who were Isaac Newton's... Who was his squad? Isaac Newton friends. He had a close friendship with the Swiss mathematician Nicolas Fatio de Dulier, who he met in London in 1689. Some of their correspondence has survived. Aw, besties. Bestie vibes only. Okay, best friend. Okay, Isaac. (laughs) Yes, Isaac. (laughs) I could run a mile. I don't know why before every time before I record a podcast episode, I'm like, you know what? I should overdose on caffeine. You know what? I should pump a an IV of liquid Cafe Bustello into my fucking blood vessel. Maybe that's what I should do. This episode is sponsored by PDS Debt. I filled up my gas tank this morning and I spent 78 US dollars on three fourths tank of gas. $78 and it wasn't even a full tank. Life is so expensive in this day and age. It makes me want to cry and sob and vomit a little bit. And listen, having debt looming over your head like a rain cloud just adds on to the stress. How many of you wish there was a better solution to paying off your debt? PDS Debt has customized 0% interest options for anyone struggling with credit cards, personal loans, collections, or medical bills. With the cost of living at a literal all-time high, now is the time to finally take initiative with your debt. Stop waiting and start saving with your own custom debt savings options from PDS Debt. PDS Debt is giving my qualified listeners a free debt savings analysis just for completing the 30-second online debt assessment at pdsdebt.com slash report. 
you will receive a full breakdown on how to save on interest each month and the quickest way to take care of your debt. If you're making payments every month on your debt and your balances are not going down, this program is for you. PDS Debt rolls all your payments into one low 0% interest monthly payment, and everyone with over 10000 or more in debt qualifies. There is no minimum credit score required. Bad and fair credit are accepted. Save thousands in interest and fees and pay off your debt in a fraction of the time. PDS Debt is offering free debt analysis to my listeners just for completing the quick and easy debt assessment at www.pdsdebt.com slash report. That's P-D-S-D-E-B-T dot com slash report. Take back your financial freedom today by visiting pdsdebt.com slash report. Okay, here's what I actually want to talk about today, which is funny because we were I was talking about Equinox at the beginning. Um... I hate the gym, dude. And I just, that's such a loaded statement because I don't mean like, don't you hate the gym? Like, I, I hate when you have to go to the gym. I mean, I hate everything about gym culture. I hate the gym itself. I hate the building. I hate the people that go to it. I hate the concept of going to a gym. I hate the fitness culture around it. I hate being a plus size person and going to the gym. Everything about it, I want to burn them all to the ground. So let's get into it. Um, first of all, walking into a gym as a person in a big body, there's not a worse feeling, by the way. I can't think of a worse feeling than walking in there and immediately feeling like I don't belong here, especially in fucking LA, dude, everyone's in shape. It's like, I, everyone here wants me dead. Everyone here is plotting my imminent death and murder and I need to leave before they actually act on it. Every time I go to a gym, I get really nervous and I have to shit. Like, I just go and poop sweaty, sweaty poop in the public gym bathroom. And I'm like, you know what? I could have saved myself all this and stayed at home and shit my own, the comfort of my own bathroom. Okay? Also, not to mention, the last apartment I lived at, it had a really nice gym. And I went in there twice, twice, the whole two years that I lived there. And the last time I went in there, I cried. I, and I had to dissect it in therapy. Because I was like, hey, what the fuck am I crying for, by the way? It was just like a really triggering experience. I on, I really don't know what what caused it. Like, it was very, very strange. And I walked in there and I was literally just walking on the treadmill. And I put it at a slight incline and I started crying. <laughs> Stupid. I just started openly sobbing. Thank Christ I was the only person in there. I was watching Love Island on my iPad, walking on the treadmill, and I was just sobbing. It's something, it, I think it just triggered something really deep of, like, I feel like I don't belong in this space. Like, like my body does not belong in this space. And I, and I was alone, which is crazy. Like, I just, no one made me feel that way. It was totally self-inflicted. It was so strange. And uh, one time I went on a hike with um, some friends to the Hollywood sign. Like, we walked, we hiked up to the Hollywood sign. It was like a two-hour hike. And I got to the top and I started crying and my friends were like, Hey, what the fuck? It's something about physical exertion and like exercise. I feel just so unwelcome in that space because I've never, that's never been my thing. I've never been athletic. I've never been in shape. I've never been healthy in that way. It's just like, I feel so out of place and self-conscious but not even about my body just like almost like fish out of water like I'm self-conscious like everyone here knows that I don't do this it's so weird anyway yeah I got to the top of the Hollywood sign just started openly sobbing anyway so let's get into it um I hate the gym because when I'm there everyone else needs to leave okay like I paid to be here can everyone else leave I don't, I don't need hot men looking at me that is Oh my God, to add insult to injury. I already don't want to be there. I already feel like an outsider. Now there's going to be hot, sexy men that are going to look at me. That are going to watch me struggle. Watch me get red in the face. Because I am so white, I'm pink. Literally, like, I, I bend down to... If I drop something on the floor, I bend down to get it. And I come back up and my face is red. Just any exertion, I turn brighter than a tomato. Just red. Everything's dirty. Just like dirty equipment. So you have to touch other people's like butt juice. <laughs> you have to like sit and rub and lick on other people's butt juice, dude. Like I don't even, oh, I'm going to bring my towel. I'm going to wipe all the equipment down and then use that same towel to wipe my face. You're getting pink eye. 
immediately, guess what? I have pink eye. I have double pink eye and somehow I have pink eye in my butthole too. Okay? What? Like, in what universe is it like, yeah, I'm going to bring this rag to wipe down the equipment? Wipe it down when you're done. It still has your sweat on it. It just seems so gross and like unsanitary and you smell like metal afterward because all the all the equipment is metal and the weights are metal and it's just like ugh I always have to have diarrhea in the gym bathroom like always I think it may be the nerves of just like being there like everything I just said it's like I'm anxious but then on top of that it's something about man my blood gets pumping I'm pooping all right we're working we're working it out of our system I also just think like what am I doing? I walk into a gym and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And then I do the treadmill and then I walk to another piece of equipment and it, I sit down and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? If it's one of these where you grab the bar and you lift it, <clears throat> I don't know what muscle that's supposed to be working out. Like biceps, maybe. But if it's biceps, then shouldn't you curl from the bottom? And then those things where you push it with your leg, I'm going to fucking crack my spine in half. Like, I'm going to walk into a gym one day and someone's just going to find my dead body. Like, I'm going to kill myself by accident. I don't even want to die. I'm just going to, like, use a piece of equipment wrong and it's going to have 350 pounds of weight on it. And I'm just going to snap something and and I'm going to die. And then Equinox is going to be like, another... Like, I am going to kill myself by accident. I have always had that fear that I'm going to do something. Or I'm going to be there and I'm going to be too prideful to ask somebody for help. Like, I'm going to really hurt myself. I just, I have that fear. Yeah, and I just turn red like a a crawfish. Like a fucking boiled lobster. It's also, it's so like, even if no one's like, okay, you go into a gym... Nine times out of 10, no one's looking at you the way that you think everyone's staring at you, right? Like no one, it's never as bad as you think. But even then, like if I'm on a piece of equipment and I just did, you know, whatever, I did the, the, whatever this is where you pull it down and I'm like, Ooh, good workout, good workout team. And I sit, I get up and I look at the seat and my gooch print is on the leather seat. I have to run out of there. That is humiliating. My my gooch print? Someone can... <laughs> the FBI using gooch prints to identify people. <laughs> like, I, I wiped everything down. I, I wiped all my fingerprints, whatever. But they're like, hmm, this gooch print matches our files. <laughs> Google, show me this guy's balls, please. <laughs> On top of the gooch prints, men... Men at the gym scare me, and also I am horny. <laughs> men at the gym are the scariest type of men, but also, hey, I'm looking, and and Mama likes what she's seeing. <laughs> Mama's on the prowl. If you let me loose in a gym when I'm ovulating, sorry TMI. <laughs> it's like it is like a hungry wild animal. At a buffet. It's like if you let me go off of six White Claws into a Vegas buffet, that's similar to me at a gym when I'm ovulating. (laughs) Oh, that's so stupid. That's literally what it feels like. Men scare me and I'm horny. That's, That's the title of my autobiography when it comes out. I also just get bored. Like you're at the gym. It's so boring. I can only watch so many TikToks or watch so many TV episodes or like I've tried to read a book before like on the treadmill. You just can't. It's so boring. And people are always like, you could do what you do in bed, like read or be on TikTok, but just be at the gym. No, I would rather be laying down. And then when I'm laying down in bed at night, I can spiral about my body. (laughs) It's harder to spiral about your body when you're actively using it. My therapist listening to this like, damn it. God damn it. 
you know, cause it's always like 2 AM when I'm like, tomorrow's the day I am going to start. I'm going to change my life. I'm going to turn my life around. Hey, never do. <laughs> hey, I never do. I get bored. And then also you have to wear a sports bra. Sports bras cut into my shoulder meat. <laughs> sports bra, they, they cut into the meat on my shoulders. Because that's not muscle there. That's just plain meat. You could cut the meat from my meaty neck and back and shoulders and sell it in lean slabs like ground turkey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, gross. But I've said this before. My meat, like if Jeffrey Dahmer were to like buy that meat pack of full Brittany Broski meat and then cook it, he'd be like, that's too acidic. Like I drink so much Pepsi. <laughs> and coke and coffee like my meat is very vinegary <laughs> it like, tastes like pickles I know that for a fact okay I know that for an absolute fact on top of the sport like just workout athletic clothes I'll wear that every single day like my lululemon shorts are the only thing that let my gooch breathe and don't chafe me and don't cut into my gut like i wanted to be a girl that was like i don't lululemon is so stupid and then i bought my first pair of those like buttery shorts and i was like damn it damn it these are good these are good it's not those like really tight amazon or like any off-brand legging shorts where they're just it's too thick of a material and I know that's for a purpose it's like to soak up sweat or whatever but like it cuts into my gut and it makes me want to scream it's like when your jeans are too tight and you have to drive and even unbuttoning them they're too tight it's like oh lululemon like I get it guys I get it okay the thought of a personal trainer makes me want to cry like don't look at me like if I could have a personal trainer that just stood in another room and, and didn't look at me, but just told me what to do. Like, I'll do it. That's fine. Like, okay, you're going to do five sets of whatever. And I'm just going to go smoke a cigarette outside. Like, period, bitch. If Katya was my personal trainer, <laughs> that's my dream scenario. If Katya was like, okay, you're going to do this. And, and you're going to stretch like this. And I'll be waiting outside smoking. Period. Okay? That's my dream. That's my dream scenario. I would work out if that were the case. Leave me to my own devices. What does that mean? Leave me to my own devices meaning. To allow someone to do what he or she wants or is able to do without being controlled or held by anyone. Often used as be left to one's own devices. Origin. The source of this idiom is French, it seems. The relevant definition in this case for device, the earliest citation for this is the following from 1300. Damn. Pat he ne souris a let his own dues. This translates to something like that he shall rise all at his own device. It is slothful and sluggishness to take penance at thy devices. That's crazy. Ooh, this is in the Bible. Jeremiah 18, 12, King James Version. And they said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices and we will, we will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. So what, but what is it, where does it come from? Why did that come to be? The word device comes from the verb devise with an S. To leave someone unsupervised to do whatever they want. What does devise mean? Devise. Plan or invent by careful thought. Oh. 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 <laughs> Plan or invent a complex procedure, system, or mechanism by careful thought. So if you leave someone to their own devices, it's the outcome of devising. That makes sense. Anyway, back to working out. <laughs> Sometimes, like, especially during the pandemic, I feel like everyone had this phase where they were, like, doing the Chloe, what was her name? The the workout girl from YouTube. Like, everyone was watching her ab workouts, like, 90-minute rock-hard abs. Like, I did it, and I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck, I'm dying, I'm dying. 
and I guess what? I don't have rock hard abs because I gave up. But I feel like for a second, everyone was doing that. They were like, well, we're all stuck inside. Let's work out. And I did that. And I was so fucking embarrassed. (laughs) Who up being embarrassed? (laughs) Hey, smash that fucking like button if you're in your room being embarrassed by yourself. Like that was literally, I would do it. And I was like, what am I doing? (laughs) Sometimes I get this flash of like, it's the office. I'm in the office, but no one else is in the room. And it's just one camera that's kind of through an open doorway, just focusing on me. And I get so embarrassed. Anyway, I'm also just like grossed out by gym culture. Like to, to really, to wrap it all with a bow. I'm so grossed out by the fitness culture of denying yourself the basic pleasures of life of like, you can't, put seasoning on your food because it has extra calories. Like, what are you talking about? (laughs) What are you talking about? You guys are fucking weird. (laughs) Just plain rice and chicken and broccoli, no seasonings. Hey, you need to like have a Coke. (laughs) Hey, sir, have a milkshake. Maybe Put some like, I don't know, Lowry seasoned salt on your food from time to time. See if your quality of life improves. It's just like you're doing all that for what? You're denying yourself eating really good food and maybe sometimes resting and taking a nap and just laying. One of the simple pleasures in life is laying down. And I believe that. I just don't get it. And I think it's also super toxic to be like, you need to wake up at 4 a.m. You need to do this. You need to do that. And and you can't do this and whatever. It's like humans aren't meant to be, to do that. I think Europeans just got it right of like, take a little nap in the middle of the day. Have a little siesta. All the businesses shut down. Everyone like goes home and has a little coffee or takes a nap, has a pastry. And then you go back to work. It's like, yeah, I'll get my work done. But like, um, I want to enjoy life as well. The American work schedule is just so not sustainable. It's not realistic. And fitness culture fits into that somehow. It's just like, you, your body is an oiled machine. No, it's fucking not. I'm a human being. <clears throat> I'm not firing on all cylinders all the time. I have like two cylinders and sometimes one doesn't even work. I'm just so like anti fitness culture. I think it's totally fine to be healthy and to want to be healthy and to respect your body and, and, you know, take care of your body. You can do that without subscribing to the toxic narrative and lifestyle of what IG fitness culture is. It's just gross and it turns me off and I just, you know, whatever. This episode is sponsored by, you know, them, you love them. Tinder guys. Uncuffing season is here, aka summer, also known as the best time to be single, to have fun. And guess what? Tinder is here to help you in this ambitious endeavor. Tinder is the world's most popular dating app, which means the most opportunity to find whatever it is you're looking for. And Tinder just released relationship goals, which is a new like status for your profile that shows others what type of connection you're looking for so you can avoid that whole awkward situation entirely. Tinder also has more safety features than any other dating app, and it's just about as easy and fun as it gets, people. You know what they say, it starts with a swipe. And that is so, so true. So many possibilities really are just a match away. So download Tinder today to explore all the possibilities for yourself. Thanks, Tinder. Okay, switching topics for a second. I'm ready to come out as a Nightmare Before Christmas adult. (laughs) This is my coming out as a Jack Skellington adult, okay? I am one of those people that's like, I have Jack Skellington Crocs. I want to get a Jack Skellington tattoo. Like, I walk into Hot Topic and I see Nightmare Before Christmas stuff and I'm like, yeah! I 
always was like, you fucking bitches are so weird with like Invader Zim stuff and Jack Skellington stuff. Like y'all are weird. And now I've come to the light side or the dark side. Like I get it, dude. I'm on your team. I'm on your side. Nightmare Before Christmas is so fucking slay. The claymation is so, I love claymation. I just love claymation. Corpse Bride is one of my favorite movies of all time. And I think that Nightmare Before Christmas gets a bad rep because the people that like it are weird. <laughs> I mean, look at me. I'm, I'm wearing a sweatshirt that says freak mode. I just like, also this is Dorian Electra's merch. <laughs> Love you, Dorian. Um, I just, I'm so, I have been so anti uh, Jack Skellington and Tim Burton, and now I'm fully embracing it. I'm ready to embrace it. Zero the ghost dog. Get into it, bitch. I'm so into it. The music is so good. What's his name? Danny Elfman. Just like legend. I'm so... I'm tired of hiding in the dark. You won't, I will not hide any longer. I love Nightmare Before Christmas. But I will say, even like to this day, because I watched it when I was a child and I was like, this is so weird. And anyone who likes this is so weird. I watched it again. I watch it every year um, around Halloween. And then I stop watching it halfway through because I want it to be a Halloween movie so bad. And when I see all the Christmas stuff, I'm like, ugh, boring. I turn it off. I'll only watch it halfway through. These little fuckers still scare me. Okay, I will admit that. They scare the fuck out of me. That's terrifying. Like still, as an adult, when I watch, when I watch Nightmare Before Christmas, I'm like, I don't really like that. <laughs> okay, he's really freaking scary. What the hell? And he's hot. Okay, he's hot. They're hot. Don't. At, okay, because this is, I think everyone should understand. And I think if you don't understand, you're lying. Because Jack Skellington is the ideal man. He's tall, thin, aggressively pale, has spindly little fingers and arms and legs. I'm upset. Like, he, he is the ideal man. This is the ideal male figure. Okay? Okay. <laughs> This is the unattainable male body type. We don't want abs. We don't want bulging muscles. I want Jack Skellington. I want him biblically. I want him as a mate. As a primal. I want him as a mate. <laughs> and I'm like, if Sally was, was thick. Sally was a little thick. I'm like if Sally wore a size 18 and shopped at Shein. <laughs> if Sally was a fast fashion sleigh girl. If Sally modeled for Fashion Nova, that's like what I am. I just love Jack Skellington, dude. Do you guys ever get this thing where it's like, you really love an animated character? You're like, oh my God, I love him so much. And then you look up the voice actor to see if they're hot. Because ideally, you want the voice actor to look like the animated character. And they never do. When I found out who voiced Aladdin, I was like, are you joking? What the fuck? I thought he was going to look like Aladdin. He doesn't. And I think he's white, too. Aladdin voice actor. Yeah, Scott Winger. That is the whitest man I've ever seen. One jump. It had it in one jump. It had it in block. I think I'm taking a stroll around the block. Aladdin's my favorite Disney movie. Aladdin and Hercules. Like, I wanted him... When I was sentient and I was like, oh my God, Aladdin isn't a real character. Someone voices him. <laughs> and I looked it up. I was like, no. 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 <laughs> when Jack Skellington didn't look like Jack Skellington. No. Oh, me. Oh, God. No. There's nothing worse. There's nothing worse. Ruin my dreams. There's a sequel? Aladdin and the King of Thieves? What the fuck is this? 1996, this came out four years later. I didn't know Aladdin had a sequel. Why is, I have never heard about, what? What is this? I've never heard about this. Oh, I know what I'm doing tonight. Holy shit. 
Who is that? He's hot. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> she has a different outfit. Oh no, this is from DeviantArt. <laughs> Can't be trusted. This episode of the Broski Report is sponsored by ZocDoc. I know the majority of my listeners have freshly become real adults. Proud of you guys. But you guys are ripe for the picking by corporate America and the capitalist workforce. And life gets really daunting and intimidating around that time. Lots of new responsibilities like, I don't know, booking your own doctor's appointments. <laughs> Who and where and hmm, how do you do that? <laughs> Well, for the anxious girlies out there who need help booking appointments, this one is for you. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated, patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're looking for. These doctors all have verified reviews from actual, real patients, not bots. The average wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between 24 to 48 hours. That's it. You can even score same-day appointments sometimes. Once you find the doctor you want, you can book them immediately with just a few taps. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. And listen, I use ZocDoc to find my dermatologist, and she slays. She slays. It was super helpful to be able to scroll through the reviews and see if the doctor's cadence is right for you. You know what I mean? Like, you can get the vibe. So here's my challenge for you. Go to ZocDoc.com slash broski and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash broski. ZocDoc dot com slash broski. What the fuck do y'all know about deviant art? I've spent many an hour on deviant art. Deviant art is a fan. It's like fan art, but it's always like scary. Everyone has a bulging sack. <laughs> deviant art. Yeah. American online art community that features artwork, videography, and photography. Uh, well, they don't say that it's like fellow artists and enthusiasts. Yeah, it's all like fan-made stuff. Have y'all seen that picture of Aladdin? Aladdin, no pants. This picture. It's like his legs are fucking balls. His legs are like a ball Oh, his legs are ball sacks. His knees are like <laughs> the rounded parts of his balls. <laughs> Me googling Aladdin nutsack pants. Aladdin nutsack legs. <laughs> oh my god. I did not know Aladdin had a sequel, dude. That is so exciting. Did Hercules have a sequel? Sequels, you're a hero. Direct to video follow up to 1997 animated feature Hercules. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. I bet these are ass. I bet that's why no one talks about them, dude. Like, do I ruin the sanctity of Aladdin and Hercules by watching the sequel? Or do I just let it exist as what it is? And do I, do I just enjoy it and let it be? Oh, I'm devastated. Zero, Hercules Zero to Hero is an hour and 10 minutes long and it has a 6.2 out of 10 on IMDb. Aladdin and the King of Thieves has the same 6.3 out of 10 for Aladdin. In this animated sequel, after months of preparation for their wedding, Aladdin and his beloved princess Jasmine are close to the big day. When Aladdin learns his father, Kasim, is still alive, he tracks him down. Drama. Kasim says he's been hunting the hand of Midas, which turns everything it touches into gold. Aladdin invites him to stay at the palace, but Kasim's obsession with the hand soon grows too strong for his new life. <gasps> Is Robin Williams in it? Give me things, Robin Williams. Yeah, he's in it. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I might have seen this. Or maybe not. Robin Williams would reprise the role of the genie reportedly for a $1 million salary after he... Ooh, there's tea. 
After a contract dispute with the Disney company over likeness rights, Robin Williams agreed to return for this film as the voice of the genie, reportedly for a $1 million salary after he received an apology from Joe Roth for Disney breaching an agreement not to use his voice to merchandise products inspired by Aladdin. Oh, so it was like a like a merchandise thing. That is tea, bitch. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm going to go home. I'm going to I'm going to go home. I'm in my home. I'm going to go home to my room next door and watch Aladdin King of Thieves tonight because holy shit, holy shit. Anyway, back to um Jack Skellington. Yeah, it's terrifying. I think that that's also the sort of draw is that I've always loved uh, what's it called? Uh, like I've had morbid curiosity, which so many people do, you know, just like being really, really interested in the macabre and things that are creepy, but not too creepy. Like I'm not a horror film enthusiast, but I definitely want to hear about some scary stuff. Like I want to hear about it. I want to read about it. I don't want to see it. Cause if you show me, Hey, I'm going to have nightmares and probably like jump off of a building or something. I don't know. Anyway, I think that uh, the charm of Nightmare Before Christmas is it's like so, it's campy now. Like it's so campy. It's, it was original. It still is like, what an original concept and it's cute and it's terrifying. And I think it still holds up. And then uh, the music is so good and I need a zero tattoo so bad. Zero, the little ghost dog. One thing about Tim Burton, he loves a ghost dog. There's one in Corpse Bride, there's one in Nine Before Christmas, and there's one in uh, Frankenweenie. The whole Frankenweenie movie is about ghost dog. And Jack is the perfect man. Like I said, he's emaciated, he's tall, curious, half dead. <laughs> Everything you want in a partner has one foot in the grave, is dead. Speaking of death, <laughs> speaking of death, I have something to say. I recently learned that Benadryl is like so, so bad for you. What do you mean by that? I take like one Benadryl a day. <laughs> Benadryl side effects long-term. Constipation, done. Blurred vision, done. Memory problems? I literally have memory problems. Anxiety, dependence. Me needing my Benadryl fix. Me getting itchy and scratchy because I haven't taken my Benadryl. Benadryl is recommended only as a short-term treatment for people with symptoms of allergies or other conditions. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, whatever. If you take Benadryl long-term, you may develop long-term side effects of the medication. Well, that sucks because Benadryl is like allergies. Allergies for me, like Claritin, Zyrtec, that shit has never worked for me for some reason. Benadryl is the only thing that really stops my nose from running, stops me sneezing, stops the itchy eyes. And like, I'll, I would take it in the morning when I used to work my nine to five, I would take it in the morning and I would be fucking exhausted, but then I would drink coffee, like whatever. It was just this constant state of like, I'm so fucking tired, but I can't sleep because I had coffee. I miss corporate America. But now that like, I've been taking Benadryl since I was like 12. What does that mean? I'm scared. I also sometimes pop ibuprofen like it's candy because my body hurts, dude. My body hurts. What am I supposed to do? Like my nightly cocktail of ibuprofen and Benadryl. And now doctors are like, mm, no, no, no. Oh, you've been doing that? You're going to die. What am I supposed to do? I love ibuprofen. <laughs> ibuprofen, she's that girl. Ibuprofen and 500 milligram Tylenol. Mwah. Mm, me kissing my pill bottles. <laughs> That's stupid. That's so troubling. It really does. Like, I be, I don't know if it's just my family, but like, I, it's always like, oh, you got a headache, this hurts, whatever, take an ibuprofen. That's just what you do. So it's crazy to be like, oh, that can actually really, really harm you long term. It's like, but it's pain medication. I mean, I guess that checks out. Still, though. Fucking Stanley told me, oh, you take Benadryl? You know, that's so bad for you. I was like, no way. He was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. Because like, oh, I have like, it's not my fault that my body can't handle being outside. It's not my fault that my body is like, mm. the wind, the grass, I'm going to make today so miserable for you. I am, what's it called? <laughs> 
<laughs> the weakest link in the evolutionary chain. <laughs> Because I smell pollen and my throat closes. <laughs> Maybe the world's trying to get rid of me. And for a good reason. I wasn't meant to survive the long, the long-standing test of life and death. What's that called? Darwinian uh, survival of the fittest. I'm not the fittest. And I've never claimed to be. On top of ibuprofen and Benadryl, like, I know soda's so bad for you. Bro, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. This is what I was talking about at the beginning of the episode. Like, I know that, okay, fitness-wise, like, sure, seasoning saves you calories, whatever. But, like, that's one of the simple joys of life. If I'm in pain, I'm going to take an ibuprofen. If I'm having a salty meal, I want to have a Coca-Cola with my meal. Because it's sugary and carbonated and sweet and good. I just like, you know, soda's bad for you. Soda rots your gut and your teeth and you're this. I don't care. Pour me up another one, bartender. Hey, brother. That's how I feel. Also, a Coca-Cola can apparently like <laughs> get the rust off of a car battery. <laughs> like if you pour Coke, what is that? If you pour Coke on like, uh, what's the shit that comes out of batteries? Coca-Cola car battery. The corrosion. What does pouring Coke on a car battery do? The acid in Coke will neutralize the corrosion on the battery and cables. When the Coke has finished bubbling, take a wire brush and brush away any corrosion that is stuck around bolts or any hard to reach areas. So if that's doing that to a car battery, dude, hey, what's it doing to my gut? And then I go to the doctor and say, my tummy hurts. <laughs> Yeah, dude, <laughs> this could literally melt the corrosion on a car battery and I'm drinking it and pissing it out. Why does it burn when I pee? <laughs> Maybe because I'm drinking acid. <laughs> Cleaning a corroded car battery with Coca-Cola. Mm, yeah, let me get some of that. Let me put a straw in that. <laughs> yeah, can I get some extra acid in my Coke, please? Yeah, do you guys actually have anything else that could corrode my teeth? Yeah, just like really wear down the enamel. Oh, no? Oh, the Coke's fine? Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No, this is great. Thank you so much. Yeah, can we get the bill? Like, that's so scary. I love Coke. Why is everything good in life having to be bad for you? One hit, bad for me. It's bad for me. <laughs> what is that song? That is so bad. One hit, bad for me. Cause I'm, uh, and what's wrong with that? Fucking AJR, dude. Who listens to AJR? If you listen to AJR, AJR, raise your hand. You're not allowed back here. No, thank you. <laughs> no, no, thank you. One sip, bad for me. One hit, bad for me. One kiss, bad for me. But I give in so easily. What? But I'm weak. And what's wrong with that? I don't even know why this song is popular. <sighs> AJR and like, who's the other one who makes music kind of like that? Oh, John Bellion. I do like some John Bellion songs, but it's the same sort of music. That's like, it's been a really, really messed up week. <laughs> Hot Chill Ray. Okay, wait, I take it back. Hot Chill Ray fucking slays. <laughs> Hot Chill Ray. It's been a really, really messed up week. Seven days of torture, seven days of bitter, and my girlfriend went and cheated on me. Ha! <laughs> She's a California dime, but it's time for me to quit her. La, 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 whatever. La, 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 doesn't matter. <laughs> Released 2011. Oh my god, people also search for I Like It Like That, Hot Shell Ray, No by Megan Trainer, What Makes You Beautiful, One Direction, and Moves Like Jagger Maroon 5. Dude, I think I peaked in 2012. It's all been downhill from there. I'm gonna get this tattooed. La, 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 whatever. La, 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 doesn't matter. <laughs> oh well. We're going at it tonight. Tonight. Do you guys remember fucking All-Star Weekend? 
holy shit. All-Star Weekend. Who did I like? Zachary. Cameron. Cameron Keesing, dude. Holy shit. Holy shit. Cameron Keesing. <gasps> he was so hot. He's 33. He's 33 and he's married. Just ruined my day. He's married, dude. I did like the lead singer too. Zach. He was hot. He kind of looks like. Oh my God. He used to be the background on my iPod touch. I would switch between him and Josh Hutcherson, dude. Oh my God. And Cameron Casing, I watched some interview with All-Star Weekend. Please tell me y'all remember All-Star Weekend. Do you? They were like kind of Disney adjacent. I think that's how I heard about them. And there used to be this show called Interview with a Vampire. Or no, no, no. My Babysitter's a Vampire. Oh my God. Me and Taylor used to obsess over that show. There was a hot guy on there too. Cameron Keesing, I used to watch, there was this interview that somebody did with All-Star Weekend and they were like, you know, oh, what's your favorite song of the moment or like of all time? And he answered um, Hell's Bells by ACDC. And at this time I was like, I was really into the Beatles. And so I didn't really, I liked Aerosmith because my stepmom likes Aerosmith and like I, you know, I grew up kind of hearing that music. And I was like, yeah, I like this this interview with Cameron where he was like hell's bells by ACDC one of the best songs ever I was like mm, okay I'll give it a try what is this song bitch that entered me into this whole era where like all I listened to was like ACDC Led Zeppelin Aerosmith Guns N' Roses like it really opened up the white dad classic rock kind of pipeline for me all thanks to Cameron Keesing. I still think about him to this day that interview changed my life like hell's bells objectively great song go listen to it. i'm gonna listen to it tonight to to honor cameron keesing can't believe he's married dude i'm gonna have like a private funeral for what could have been give me give me 30 minutes alone with Karen, cameron keesing i could i could really work some magic dude oh he was so hot or maybe not <laughs> cameron keesing instagram oh is this his wife sarah Sarah, oh no, Cameron Keesing. He only has 25,000 followers. Oh, dude. Is he a pilot? He's a pilot? This year, I'll be working all day on Christmas and I couldn't be more thankful. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from my family to yours. Sydney Sierrota, that's his wife. Oh, dude. Oh, okay, she has 400,000. So she's, she does like influence. Oh, she's a musician. Oh my God. Show me pictures of Cameron. Yes, dude. Yes. <laughs> I love you more every day. Happy four years of marriage to her, my best friend. This is so upsetting. This is a lot for me to take in all at once. She's gorgeous. Oh my God. She's so beautiful. So what does he do now? What does he do? Are they, are they together? Like, do they tour together? He was in Austin. Oh my God, he was in Austin. What if he was around the same time? I was in Austin. What if I ran, if I ran into Cameron Casing on the street, it would be in the news. That would be of national importance. Okay, guys, that just about does it for me this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in, for having a laugh with me, for listening and watching and, and kissing and whatever you guys, whatever you guys are doing. Okay. Have a great rest of your week. Make good choices. Uh, uh, pay your credit card off. Okay. Don't, don't miss that bill. Okay. My followers have good credit and that's something I really pride myself on. Okay, guys loving you all subscribe to the YouTube, uh, rate me five stars. Listen on whatever streaming platform is your favorite choice and we'll see you next week. All right, guys. Be good. Mm -hmm. Loving you. Bye, 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 bye.